Channel 4's Eyewitness News. This is Ion Hurricanes. The 2017 hurricane season is here, which means it's time to prepare yourself and your family for whatever may come our way. While most forecasts call for an average season, we know that it only takes one storm to test us. And with that in mind, our goal for the next half hour is to get you prepared. We begin with more on the forecast from Chief Meteorologist Carl Arredondo. For many years, you've heard us talk about the El Nino phenomenon and what it means for hurricanes, and it could be a factor this year. Meteorologist Alexandra Cranford looks at that and other reasons behind the number of storms we might see this season. It is possible that an El Nino could form. It could develop by about August or September, although right now we are in a neutral phase, neither El Nino nor La Nina. But again, it looks like factors may come together to possibly allow El Nino to develop kind of at the peak of hurricane season. If it does develop, that would create some stronger wind shear that would suppress hurricane formation. Taking a look at the El Nino kind of outlook when we do have that during a hurricane season, El Nino, of course indicates the warmer than average waters off the coast of South America like Ecuador and Peru and that influences our weather over in our part of the Gulf, the Caribbean Sea and into the tropical Atlantic. It creates stronger wind shear which makes it difficult for hurricanes to form and often that leads to fewer tropical systems. Another forecast factor this year is that we may have colder than uh, normal North Atlantic waters. In fact, we do have them right now in the Gulf of Mexico. In the early season, we have about upper 70s to low 80s for those sea surface temperatures. But looking out into the northern Atlantic, notice that the waters are in these yellow and green shades, indicating cooler than normal temperatures out here, and that can play a role later in hurricane season. Also, we may be entering a quieter long term pattern. We're watching an oscillation called the Atlantic multi decadal oscillation. It typically runs about 15 to 30 years. And if we do enter a certain phase of it, it can lead to fewer tropical uh, storms. Here are your 2017 storm names. We have already made it through Arlene, the first name on the list. That was for a subtropical uh, storm that formed in the northern Atlantic. Really no threat to land. That was back in mid-April, a bit unusual. Our next storm, if we do see it, would be Brett. And if we did make it into the about average uh, time frame for those named storms, we'd probably make it to about Katia or Lee. For Ion Hurricanes, I'm meteorologist Alexandra Cranford. This hurricane season, you'll see us using some new forecasting tools when we talk about one of the most important and dangerous aspects of hurricanes, storm surge. Meteorologist Dave Nussbaum spoke with the director of the National Hurricane Center about the dangers of storm surge and the new tools forecasters will use to alert people. It may come as a surprise that the wind is not the most dangerous and damaging part of a hurricane. Hurricane force winds are a strong and damaging part of the storm, but the hurricane storm surge is far worse. According to research by Dr. Rappaport at the National Hurricane Center, storm surge has resulted in the largest loss of life from hurricanes in the United States. The state of Louisiana is very familiar with storm surge and its impact on our lives. Katrina is the pinnacle when we talk about surge, but we don't need a huge surge to disrupt our lives. Back in 2012, Hurricane Isaac was a much smaller storm, but due to its slow movement, it caused a significant surge. Isaac in 2012 caused some places to flood due to storm surge, the salt water from the ocean, that did not flood during Katrina. Well, how could that be? Katrina was so much worse overall, well, but Isaac was coming in from a different direction, had its own unique characteristics, and caused some places to flood that Katrina didn't. And the next one could be different from either one of those two for wherever you live. Back in 2008, we were not hit by Hurricane Ike as it moved west to Galveston, Texas, but we had over an eight-foot surge along our coastline. This caused significant coastal flooding for all of our coastal Louisiana locations. To help with stressing the risk of storm surge flooding, the National Hurricane Center has developed a new product, a storm surge watch and a storm surge warning. It is issued before the tropical storm or hurricane arrives. It's very simple, it's very straightforward. It's depth of water. So you see colors and as the colors go from cool colors like blues to warmer colors like yellows, oranges and reds, it's indicating that the water depth could potentially be deeper in those areas. So if you're colored in any of it, that's not good. Um, and if you're colored in, in, the, in the brighter colors, like the yellows, oranges, and, and especially the reds, that means it's time to do something to protect yourself. If you live inside the levee system, you are still at a risk for flooding. 
You have to listen for an evacuation order, and if one is ordered, then you must leave. The best thing you can do is to be prepared. Visit their insurance agent and get supplies, strengthen your home, have an evacuation plan. And that's your main homework assignment uh, here in the Gulf Coast region because we've got all these new storm surge products and warnings coming out this year, but they won't realize their full potential if people don't know what they're going to do if emergency managers, based on that information, tell them to evacuate. For Ion Hurricanes, I'm meteorologist Dave Nussbaum. Up next, a look at the state of flood protection this hurricane season from the Army Corps of Engineers' top local commander. And Dennis Waltering reports on work being done to shore up storm protection on the West Bank and the new technique being used there to help strengthen local levees and fight storm surge.